after concentrating her energies in the region of the solar plexus. Paranaya felt herself diffuse out of her own body. At first the schism incited a sense of disorientation, of dizziness. She was gyrating, spinning around and around in circles at the speed of light. This was closely followed by an ululation that came from somewhere beneath her. It jolted her out of the inert position and shuttled her skywards. Her disembodied consciousness floated upwards and expanded outwards like helium gas. Before long, her personal energy field was hovering above the mountain temple like a bulbous cloud. Witnessing the slab of gypsum, the precise moment it tore away from the roof and landed on the three bodies inside, one of which was still in a state of suspended animation. What happened next was rather puzzling, as if she'd somehow slipped through a mirror, walked through a time warp, or been sucked through a black hole even. She was zapped through mountains and deserts of iridescent dust, to the heart of an amorphous black heap, Stygian darkness that started off as a three-dimensional spherical hole, but then began to divide and further subdivide into tiers of hexagonal cells, like those of an earthly beehive. In fact, when Paranaya pondered the reality of her situation, it were as if she'd become entrapped inside the polygonal chambers of a colossal beehive, which were boundless and whose being extended as far back as the primeval time origin, if not further. An ethereal quietude, overlaid with rapturous vibration, reverberated through the darkness, stirring within the intuitive feeling that this was her eternal home. Paranaya was by nature a curious being, and so the desire and temptation to pry deeper into the hive and discover truths about the cosmos were ever-present. But as she was to find out, something stood in the way of that understanding. Another presence wanting to make itself known suddenly materialised in the Stygian darkness. At first, Potanaya thought that the movement was coming from in amongst the hexagonal cells of the beehive, but that conviction soon went the way of the Golden Age. No, the presence didn't originate from the hexagonal cells at all but rather from the nucleus of the Stygian unity. The unity multiplied itself over and over until it had acquired a shape that was part humanoid, part B. It began to form definitive features, an elongated head with thin lips and large, meaty eyes, a wasp-waisted body and a thick abdomen. Paranaya could almost hear the fluttering of its translucent wings as they sprouted anew along its back. A very powerful sensual energy radiated from the divine being. There wasn't anything that this being remained ignorant of, or anything which would remain a cult before its all-pervading justice. It could inhabit a single locale, a pinprick of time and space, or alternatively encompass the entire diffused background of energy fields that made up the cosmos. It was omniscient, empathic, and telepathic, all at once. Are you our white queen? Podanaya asked. It is I. You're really speaking to me, aren't you? Potanaya was elated. We speak the same language, Potanaya. We have discovered the moon milk, Potanaya said, and the moon milk has finally opened the portal which leads to you. I know. Of course you know. Forgive me. The language of the white people will be lost, Potanaya. Why, O Queen? Potanaya asked. I have only ever used it for the sake of good. Because it challenges the absolute authority and will of the Creator the divine being revealed. It challenges the threads of fate that are woven from the fabric of the cosmos. How? You tamper with the contingencies and inclinations of nature. It is unlawful. But I need your powers to fight the red people, said Potanaya. They will come to desecrate our temples and destroy us. The time of the red people is very near, the being said. It cannot be helped. You must defend us from the ravages of the red people, Potanaya insisted. Our ways are the ways of truth. They are only half the truth, the being revealed. Blood sacrifice will not influence the heavenly order. If anything, they defile the sanctity of created life. Oh, great mother, Potanaya sighed, we have been cursed. Nothing is ever accursed in nature, the divine being said. It merely runs its course and fulfills its destiny. I too, O oh queen, must return to fulfill my destiny, Potanaya said. My people need me. You cannot return to earth. Potanaya, the being revealed. Why not? Your body has been rendered too weak to contain your life force. You mean I'm dead? Potanaya asked. If you choose to regard it as such, the divine being said, you can choose to return, but the plight will most likely be an unsuccessful one. What do you propose I do? 
you must let yourself go for being instructed. You must forfeit your personal history, your memories your, and unique vibrations, your very life force to me. You must beach yourself upon the shores of pure consciousness until the seasons change again. There will come a time when the stars will call for the conferral of the lunarized powers upon the reddened peoples, powers which will be forgotten completely. That is when you will be allowed to descend, to return, to incarnate. Potanaya remained silent. If you return, you will suffer the second death, non-existence, the divine being revealed. You will not be able to diffuse back through the portal. Fine, Potanaya said. I accept your offer. You agree with all your being? With all my being, Potanaya repeated. So let it be done. Potanaya resisted every attempt to hold herself together. Bit by bit, the shards of her personal energy field broke off from her nucleus and were absorbed by the wasp-wasted divinity's self-generated vortices. It wasn't long before she was one with the noetic matter of which the entire cosmos had been hewn. There she entered that much-desired condition known as Nirvana, a dreamlike state that was entirely indigenous to divinity itself. In time, she would incarnate to deliver the golden logos of the goddess, to spur human beings to the remembrance of who they once were, and what they could become. Thank you.